and um, I'm back on my own again today. Sarah's back. The kids are um, I'm back at school, so I've got a day to myself to, well, not a lot on, so to recharge a bit really, which quite nicely leads me into what I want to talk about today, and that is um, batteries. How do batteries degrade, or do they at all, in EVs over the course of their life? Now, here's a kind of a, a precursor, if you like. If you are particularly into uh, the chemistry of batteries or you know an awful lot about it, um, this probably isn't the video for you. Uh, having done quite a bit of research, I can categorically say that it's not a topic that particularly interested me. Uh, I found it quite heavy going, in fact. Uh, but from that, actually, what I need to know is uh, kind of in a layman's terms, what do I need to look out for? And that's how I want to pitch this video. This is very much me as an EV driver looking for a, a second-hand car, potentially. What do I need to know? Let's first of all cover the, the two main things that we believe de degrade batteries. Uh, there are other bits within that, and I'll talk about that, but the two main things are um, the time the battery's around, its lifespan, um, and the amount of times it's recharged and how it's recharged. So let's start with the, uh, the lifespan of the battery. So this is, I, some people call it the shelf life. If you took that battery um, from the factory, just made, sat it on a shelf, how many years would it be before that battery becomes useless? Well, it's very rare to find batteries that are produced and not put in cars at the moment because there's such a shortage of them, they all go straight into cars. So it's, it's unusual to find one that has done absolutely nothing. There's a few examples out there where um, cars have been stripped not long after they've been sold, whether for whatever reason, whether they've been crashed or whatever, they've got very, very low mileage. And then those batteries have been put to one side in storage and then tested. Uh, and again, they haven't been tested over 15 years. They've been tested over three years, five years, you know, not a great amount of time. But it's interesting to see what the results are on that. So that there is a you know, general belief overall that batteries degrade over time if they're not used. Well, these small tests that have been done show that they pretty much don't. Um, and if they do, it's so minuscule that it's hardly worth talking about. So even if you times that up over 15 years, it would barely make a difference. Actually, the life, the shelf life of a battery shouldn't really matter. What matters is how we treat it. And that brings us on to the other side of it, charging cycles. So, charging cycles, how does that affect your battery's life? Well, into this comes uh, an awful lot of other factors, and this is where we can draw everything together. On top of how many times do you charge it in a day, we need to think about uh, the temperatures that we charge it in. Um, and that was something that was really highlighted, especially with the first generation leaf, leaves, 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 uh, in, uh, in Arizona. Because the temperatures are so extreme there, they're so hot, what people were finding is the battery degradation was way beyond any, any level that anyone expected. So that's one side of it, but with a Nissan Leaf, there's obviously a battery management system built into the car, as there are in all cars, but there's no thermal cooling system. There's no system to keep the battery temperature maintained, which you find in a lot of other cars. Uh, so that's something to consider. Is, is there a, um, a cooling system built in so that your battery remains at a constant level when you're charging it? The other thing is uh, the type of charging you do. Now your home charger, uh, it may charge at 3.3 or 7 kilowatts. That's kind of the standard at the moment. If you go to a rapid charger, certainly here in the UK, uh, with anything sort of like a Nissan Leaf type car, you're gonna be charging around 50 kilowatts. Uh, that's a rapid charger. These chargers, charge times are gonna be going up and up. 100 kilowatts is unusual. We're pushing towards 350 kilowatts. Now, whilst that's brilliant, uh, it gets you back on the road really, really quickly. If you keep putting that kind of charge um, into your battery, it, it doesn't like it. It can cope with it, it can deal with it every so often, but if you're doing that 
two, three times a day, every day, then your battery is going to degrade as a result of it. So it's all very well talking about the theory of it and what, you know, how to look after batteries, but what does that look like in real life and how is that going to help you choose a car if you want to look for a second-hand car? Well, let's look at my car. Now, I've, the point that I checked my battery, I'd owned my car for two and a half years. At that point, I'd driven just over 30,000 miles, I'd had it for two and a half years, and um, my, I have no real pattern to my charging. The vast majority of my charging is done here at home. I do sporadic rapid charges, so um, it might be that I do maybe one rapid charge a week, I might go a month without doing any, uh, I might go through a period where I do a, a rapid charge every day for a week and another time I have done four in a day. So it's quite sporadic. So at that point, two and a half years, just over 30,000 miles, my battery health was 97%. If you take that figure and expand it over 10 years, so saying that there, there's no curb as such, it's just it maintains its degradation on the same level, over 10 years of ownership, I would have lost approximately 20% of my battery. Well, that to me is nothing. For 10 years, when you then look at uh, ICE cars and um, the degradation you get in those, uh, I would say it's probably comparable. Maybe even worse than an ICE car, I don't know. And this is it's really difficult actually to find any hard and fast figures on how ICE cars degrade over the years. So that's my own personal experiences. Let's now look at probably one of the older EVs and um, there's a, a small amount of data we can pull from that. So the Tesla Roadster, quite groundbreaking in its time. Uh, it, it's had a number of uh, reviews and tests done on it. One in particular caught my eye. So the Roadster was uh, released in 2008. Uh, in 2013, I think it was, so about five years after it was released, um, a study was done. They took 126 Roadsters. Uh, in total, they had covered over 3 million miles between them and they looked at the battery degradation of those roadsters after 100,000 miles each. What they found was that with those batteries, they could expect the battery health to be at between 80 and 85%. So 100,000 miles, you're still looking at 80 to 85% on a very, very old first generation battery after five years of use. Uh, remember, batteries have evolved since then and the systems to look after them have evolved also. If you then fast forward, there's been another study done with a, uh, a Model S. And what they found was that after 50,000 miles, the uh, health of the battery in that Model S was down to about 94%. Uh, it then went on to say that every 30,000 miles thereafter, it would drop by 1%. So at uh, 100,000 miles, it's going to be about 92%. And um, that is a drop in range. I think they looked at uh, the 60 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, that is a drop of range in about, or of about 21 miles. So, you know, that is how it's evolved already from first generation Tesla to second generation Tesla. Uh, it's a massive step forward. For me, the kind of the things that I've taken from this research I've done uh, are, first and foremost, uh, don't worry about how old the battery is. That doesn't seem to make an awful lot of difference. Secondly is, think about how the battery is being treated. Is the person who's use it, using it, are they rapid charging every single day? Because no doubt that does have an effect on it. That's not to say that the odd rapid charge isn't good for it. It's like the old, um, have a glass of wine a day, apparently it's good for you. Well, the occasional rapid charge for an EV is good because it, um, it reignites the cells uh, and um, gets them working again. Just don't overdo it. And finally, have a think about the system that's within the car. Has it got any thermal management? Now, the Nissan Leaf, uh, including the new 2018 one, has no thermal management in it. There's talk that the 60 kilowatt one that will come in a year's time will have, but we'll wait and see on that. Uh, Teslas do, other cars do. So if that's part of the car, then that is gonna help protect the battery even further. Would I buy a, a used higher mileage uh, electric car? Definitely yes. Uh, having done this research now, uh, and knowing what I know from my own car, 
I would have no reservations whatsoever about buying a, a used electric car. Uh, I probably would avoid the very early ones because the battery management systems in them probably weren't as good as they are now. So hopefully that's kind of explained battery degradation to you without going into all the ins and outs about how the ions transmit and work off each other and uh, I'll be honest it's all very very dull and I lost interest very quickly. Uh, they're the things to look out for, uh, do not be worried about it, couple of little checks, probably no more than you would have done if you were buying a nice car anyway um, and you can have uh, a second hand EV um, and be happy, comfortable and know that it is going to last you uh, beyond six months. So um, yeah, hopefully that's helped you. If it has, um, remember to like and share and if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again soon. Take care.